Hi everyone, we're coming to you live on Facebook. I'm Ashley Norden, Education Developer here at Blick Art Materials. We are really excited to bring you this Modern Impressionist Landscape Painting Demo. We're going to be using Utrecht acrylic colors, including the cadmium free options, on a 9x12 pre-primed and pre-stretched canvas. We're going to be creating uh, impressionist brush strokes using the Blick palette knives by RGM, which are made in Italy. And we're going to be painting from reference using this image, um, which is bright and colorful and has incredible jewel-like tones that we're going to capture with our acrylics. And we're going to take a journey right down through the canals in Venice uh, as we construct this painting. I want to remind everyone before we get started that we are doing a free $100 Blick e-gift card giveaway this evening, as always. And uh, we do have a question prompt for you to respond to in the chat. First, make sure that you like this post, you like and follow us on Facebook, and then let us know who's your favorite impressionist painter. And have you ever painted with a palette knife before? Let us know in the chat and you'll be entered to win that $100 Blick e-gift card. Let's go ahead and get started on this painting demo. And I wanna let everyone know that we're going to be in the chat live, so if you have any questions for us along the way, just hop in, let us know, and we'll do our best to answer those questions for you. Uh, working from a reference image on this 9 by 12 canvas, I want to give you a pro tip for painting when you are buying the pre-stretched canvas. And that pro tip is to give your canvas a couple coats of acrylic gesso before you get started. I have the Utrecht uh, Professional Acrylic Gesso here. Uh, typically this is meant to be thinned with a little bit of water. And you can really just apply it with a bristle brush, anything that you have handy. Uh, this is a one inch Blick Essentials brush. And <clears throat> I'm gonna use my painting cap here because it's a little bit resourceful. You don't need a lot of gesso, like I said, thin it down with a little bit of water. I'm gonna take some clean water, just mix it in here. Load it up on your brush. Okay, and then I'm gonna take it over to my nine by 12, and I'm just gonna slap a couple coats on. And what this is going to do um, is it's going to help make that canvas nice and taut again. Uh, it's gonna make it um, tighter like a drum. So as you paint and you apply pressure to your canvas, uh, the canvas will sag, and we don't want that because we're going to continue to apply pressure as we work. So this is an extra step that you can take to bring that canvas uh, back to that nice, tight, drum-like state. And you want to use your water to keep the gesso gliding along your surface. And another thing I'm doing is I'm applying the gesso in both directions. That way, I'm really working uh, the product into the surface. Depending on how thick you apply the gesso, you might want to add an extra coat. That's totally up to you. Make sure you get the edges. And you're going to want this to dry all the way through before you start painting. I've got a nice coat on here. I'm going to remove some of that bristle texture by working vertically and then applying horizontally. And I can already see, not 100% sure if you can see on the camera, but I know from where I'm standing, I can already see a little bit of an improvement on this surface. And that's all you'll need to do. Of course, I'm gonna clear out my painting cap so I can open my container later on down the road, it's not glued together. Set that to the side. All right, got water for that. Once your canvas is primed, we're gonna want to make a drawing right 
on here, and that's going to set us up for our underpainting. I've started a sketch, and I'm gonna keep working on it here for our demonstration. I'm using an HB pencil by Blick Studio, and what I'm working on is observing the image that we're going to be drawing and trying to capture those lines and angles so that I have uh, a good rendering to work from for our underpainting. So here, I've gotten some key information worked in. And if you've been watching us for a while now, you may have seen um, the sketching technique that I like to use, which is to measure what you're observing with the blunt end of your pencil. Just hold your pencil up to that line or that object, and you can get a pretty accurate representation of that angle. For your sketch, you don't need an incredible amount of detail. You really just need enough information about the foliage, the windows, some of these fascinating door openings and angles as they come right out of the water. We have this really great bridge that we're going to be working in. So let's make sure we get that. We have a nice horizon line on the water. So as we're working, we're going to continue to go back and look at this reference image and continue to make sense of it and pull out the details. Okay, I really enjoy capturing details like this pole that's in the corner, <clears throat> but I'm not going to get too hung up on details like drawing each and every brick. So pulling out the right information for your sketch is all that's needed to get started. Okay, once you've got your sketch ready, you're going to want to make an underpainting, and the underpainting is the part of the painting that you lay down first that maps out where you want your colors to fall, and then we're going to work over that with uh, a painting medium, the Utrecht uh, matte and gloss gel mediums, and we're going to mix that right with our paint, and we're going to lay that right down on our canvas. So let's get started. I'm using a glass palette today, and um, the glass palette is an excellent way <coughs> to uh, reduce waste, and it's very easy to clean. So I do highly recommend, if you are doing a lot of painting, um, that is a place to start. I think for our underpainting, we're going to want to start with some of these neutral tones, like a yellow ochre. As you can see, looking back in our reference, this is a strong color that we can get a lot of information filled in with. When I set up my palette, I just want to set it up so that it's easy to mix the colors together, and I don't have a, some version of red, yellow, and blue uh, next to each other where I'm going to get muddy colors. So as I'm starting, I'm just going to put down some of these neutrals, and then we're going to work our way into those oranges and reds. So I've got a yellow ochre, and I have the cadmium-free yellow light. And let's also add in just a little bit of orange, also cadmium-free. And you'll see, um, as we start working, uh, how incredible the cadmium-free colors are mixing for us. Um, you know, uh, we're so used to the cadmium standard of color mixing purity, um, but I think once you do get your hands on these, you'll be extremely pleased with what you find. So we're going to give those a try today. Quinacridone red, and then I'm going to top it off here with a large amount of white. Um, Another rule of thumb for painters is that uh, when you're working with acrylics and oils in particular, you will use a lot of white. Um, it will help you uh, greatly with mixing your colors. And you're going to want to have plenty of that on hand. I'm going to go ahead and put my blues over here. 
And there's no exact science to setting up your palette, in my opinion. I think there are great ways to set up your palette, and I think um, taking lessons on setting up your palette from the masters is highly, highly recommended. Um, and I think what works for me is just that rule, keeping in mind uh, red, yellow, and blue don't mix. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. A little bit of water to activate your acrylics. Not a lot, it's not a watercolor. We just want to keep the colors workable and pretty much moist. Uh, with my assortment, I have the Utrecht Manglon uh, synthetic bristle brushes, which are excellent for their snapback um, and uh, maintaining their shape. Highly recommend. I want to use a brush that's going to uh, fit some of these shapes um, that I'm going to be working in. So I'm starting with the flat um, option and I'm going to dive straight into this yellow ochre. And I think this is great, but right out of the tube, I think it's a little intense compared to um, this golden color that we're seeing here. So I'm just gonna bring in to brighten it up some yellow. And that makes it a little more golden. Great. And then to uh, take it down, because it is an underpainting, uh, we're not necessarily going full vibrancy yet. I'm going to bring in some white. Here's my lightest white. So now I've got a little range here of a nice pale yellow um, to a more, a more mustard yellow. And you want to start off with those light colors. So I'm going to load up my brush and I'm going to come right over here. And uh, looking back, it looks like we can hop right into the center and uh, start filling in some of this uh, color on these buildings. So I'm going to lay that down and you can see how bright these colors are. Look at how um, bright that cadmium free yellow made this color mixture. And um, at this point, my paint should be transparent enough, thinned enough, uh, to where I can still see my pencil drawing underneath. I want to go a little bit lighter and a little more neutral. So here's where setting up your palette to your liking is going to be to your benefit. I know I'm going to get someone in the audience who says, no, setting up your palette is an exact science. And there is a rhyme and a reason. And yes, there is a rhyme and a reason. But I guess my point is, don't be intimidated at starting where you feel comfortable. And take it from there. This is a really nice neutral. And I do like to keep my underpainting fairly neutral. Because when we go back, in and apply that heavy body, uh, medium mixed paint, uh, we're gonna go right over this layer. So this is a quick um, step and we don't wanna spend too, too much time on it. Get the doorway filled in here. But I do enjoy this process. Um, the, the point here that we're going to want to make is that you're laying out a road map for how you want uh, your painting to, um, how, how you want to assort your colors, how you want to assort this palette on the page. I'm mixing with a little bit of the cadmium free orange and the way that this is set up is making it really easy for me to jump from one color to the next. Still pretty neutral, but with that hint of brick. This is a great opportunity in this step to um, make observations about where you can work in texture and where you can work in details and where you can um, elaborate on your brush stroke. So the more I go back in and uh, touch up layer after layer, the more I'm going to build uh, some really nice 
brushwork. And again, that falls in as kind of a roadmap to how you're making your painting. And this is some brick that we've got here. So painting in uh, multiple directions to get that brush stroke can really help you. So it's not just necessarily working, you know, with straight up and down brush strokes. You want to paint in the direction of the light, which means you might go this way and you might go that way. So we've got some really nice colors and hues happening. I'm going to keep moving here, try and keep moving quickly. Capture this orange on the side of the building. Let's make sure before we forget to go ahead and work in this uh, detail on this pole here. I'm going to continue to use my flat brush, clean it out just a little bit, and I just use a paper towel. I'm going to take some of this cadmium free red medium. Cadmium free red medium is a crucial color on your palette. Um, so if you are um, mixing these red tones, I think you'll really like the way that this stands out. Just a couple quick brush strokes, making sure that your brush is a good fit for the shape that you're painting. And that kind of sets it in space already. So just a reminder, if you've been with us this whole time, or if you're just joining us, uh, we're painting a modern impressionist landscape this evening. Uh, we have a bundle page set up for you, and uh, there's a link in uh, the description this, uh, of this post, and you can find all the materials that I'm using here today. The U-Truck colors, the mediums, um, the brushes, and the palette knives that we're going to use here shortly. And don't worry about this little bit of blending for this underlayer painting. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to get it set up. So click on that uh, bundle page link where you're going to find all these supplies. And uh, you can paint along with us, of course, or you can play this back and follow along um, so that you can you know, capture the, the steps and um, some of the information and take that along with you. I'm going to fill in some other quick information, uh, but you know what? I'm going to use a larger brush. I'm going to go to the next size up, and this is a filbert, which means it's just a rounded flat. And I'm going to take this white, a nice large portion of it, down here to my blue. And I'm just going to take a little bit of blue, and I'm going to paint our sky. And it's just a very slight off white that lets us know it's separate from the buildings. And just work that in. And I love this step in a painting where I don't have to worry too much about the detail. I can just lay the paint down. All right. And I have great coverage here with the Utrecht paint. Okay, great. Let's get a couple more pieces worked in before we move on to our next step. Let's fill in this information here uh, in the water area. We have these wonderful uh, blue-greens and uh, turquoise tones and all kinds of different colors in the water that we want to try to capture. Um, for now, let's focus on getting this underpainting down. I'm going to mix this beautiful turquoise color that um, I try to find ways to work this color in uh, to a lot of my work because I just think it's um, a stunning color, goes a long way, um, and maybe that's a little dark. I'm going to bring some of this blue in that I had. When you add uh, a little bit of white to a color, that makes that color muted. 
And you can see where we've just muted uh, the color of the water and it really brought it to uh, a much more palatable um, color for our underpainting. So let's get this filled in. And don't forget if you have any questions for us, we'll be live in the chat. And we look forward to hearing uh, what your response is to our question prompt for the evening so that you can win a $100 Blick e-gift card. And uh, that question prompt is, who is, your in who is your favorite impressionist painter? Say that five times fast. And then also let us know uh, if you've ever painted with a palette knife before, because that's really what we're working up to. And um, the reason that we want to know the answer to that question is because uh, we want to um, inspire you to try palette knife painting if you haven't given it a try before. Uh, and if you have already, what are some of your tips that you have for uh, some of us who might be beginners? You know, let us know uh, in the chat and we can talk about, um, you know, how different ways that we like to use palette knives. I know I'm looking forward to seeing some of those responses. All right, let's uh, do one other item uh, before we move on to the next step uh, because I want to make sure I get you all the information that we can. We have a figure here uh, that is drawn in, and it's the person who's operating this boat in the canal. And we want to make sure we give that some attention. And I'm going to use my small round brush, and we're going to fill in where this little boat is right here. All right, perfect. And then let's give this man uh, a nice hat, as they often wear in Italy when they are rowing boats. And this man has a hat too. And his oar. We've got some wood here too. Let's go ahead. And... All right. And then he has the famous red and white striped shirt as he paddles. And some blue jeans. All right. That's going to give us a little something to go on. Okay. All right, so we're going to keep working in this way. I'm going to show you one last technique, um, or one last color that I want to bring in, and that's for the brick. Um, brick can be a challenge. It's really a combination of you know reds and browns and yellow and orange and um, different uh, types of aggregate. And we don't want to get too um, caught up on the color, uh, but I just want to give you some insight. I like to use a burnt umber and a little bit of cadmium-free medium, and just a tiny bit of this yellow ochre to lighten it up, and that's a perfect color for our underpainting. You can punch that up with a little bit more red or add a little bit of white to lighten it. You can take it from there. And then of course, other details as you see fit. So there's just a little bit of a All right. I like where this is going, and I want to make sure that we have time for our next step with the palette knife. So, a couple more brush strokes. Okay. 
Now, at this point, obviously you're going to want to keep working until you have all of the white space covered. Add in as much detail or as little detail as you feel comfortable with. Once you get to a place where you feel like uh, you've covered that, that white, um, you've got your shutters, uh, we've painted our um, foliage, boxes, windows, the water, the stones, you know, capturing just a little bit of that information uh, is going to go a long way in this next step of the process, which is really the meat and potatoes of what we're going to be doing here. And that's taking the Utrecht acrylic paint, mixing it with that gel medium, giving it a heavy body texture, and laying that down with an impressionistic stroke uh, using the RGM palette knives. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to be using the Artist Acrylic Matte Gel Medium. So um, you can use a gloss gel or a matte gel. This is by Utrecht. And uh, it's transparent right out of the container, so there's no color. And we can mix it directly uh, with our paints. I like to start with a ratio in mind of how much paint to how much uh, medium I would like to use. And as a rule, I like to start with a 1 to 10 ratio. So that's one part paint to 10 parts medium. And uh, you can tweak that however you feel is necessary. Uh, but it's a starting point. So when you're using the matte gel medium, and I'm just going to put some down here where we've been mixing. Um, the more medium you use, the more transparent your color will be. So. Um, just a little bit of color, and we're going to go ahead and start mixing here. I'm working right over this acrylic paint uh, that we were using before. Certainly, um, if you use a paint scraper, which you can find on the bundle page, as, along with this glass palette and all these palette knives, um, you can use a paint scraper to remove any layers of dried paint, and then you can just keep working right on over it. I'm using basically the same color formulas that we established when we were working on our underpainting. So not much needs to deviate in terms of how you've set up your palette. But I will say, make sure that it is mixed thoroughly. So this is the size 22 palette knife. It has a nice pointed edge and a rounded, um, rounded bottom uh, that's perfect for uh, lifting the paint up, but also placing it back down on your canvas with precision, which is something that can be tough when you're painting with a palette knife. We're used to working with brushes and we have so much control, and uh, this is a little bit different. So you're going to want to pick up that color, and um, I'm a little particular about how I pick up my paint, but load it up. Look at all that luscious paint that we're going to lay down. And we're going to cover the largest areas first. All right, so you're going to take that broad stroke and we're just going to really lay it in. And look at how thick and creamy. And there's a little bit of yellow in there. That's okay. And then add in your texture. Look at how many jobs this one palette knife can do. And that's what I really love about this process. That's that impressionist brush stroke that we love, where we're just constantly making a, an impression in the paint. And that's what the heavy body paint is great for. Um, this is the Utrecht um, Heavy Body Artist Acrylics. I'm changing palette knives for colors for time, but certainly if you clean your palette knife off in between colors, you can say, um, use the same one. So just something to think about there. Um, there are also, you know, several other shapes. I'm trying to think of the next color that I want to tackle here, maybe on these houses working my way down. Um, Think about the palette knife shapes that you have. I've got a couple here. For example, um, this size 132 is great for scooping paint out of a jar and mixing it up, um, you know, if you have large amounts and uh, something like that. This is going to be great for that. The 22 I think is incredibly versatile. I use it for everything. All right, I'm going to mix up some of this yellow and continue on the path of some of these neutral tones that we've created. 
And I just love the paint mixing part. I'm keeping my analogous colors close together. The analogous colors being uh, the colors that are close together on a color palette as opposed to being on the opposite side where you start to, uh, when you mix those colors, you get your neutrals. All right, pick up some of this yellow and let's work it in to this house here. This is kind of a mustardy Italian yellow color that we love. And it's going right over, right over these layers. And as you're applying it, build in that impressionist brush stroke. So you're laying it out with the broad side and then painting in with the brush stroke. Now, of course, um, when impressionism became popular, uh, we can probably safely assume that a lot of artists were using oils uh, to um, depict their uh, landscapes and, and things like that. So uh, while we aren't using oil colors today, we are using um, a method that's going to dry a lot more quickly than an oil. So if you're um, concerned about drying times or potentially using a paint that might have um, some fumes um, due to using paint thinners and things like that, you'll be able to avoid that with the acrylics. But then we have the added layer of safety um, uh, without having to use um, those mediums. All right. Another point of note is that um, you can see with the heavy body paint that it's really nice and fluffy. And you might wonder how much of that fluffiness is going to remain. Um, and honestly, a lot of that's going to flatten out. Once that moisture um, has wicked out of the paint through, you know, uh, drying out, then it's really going to flatten out some of that texture. The other thing is, when you're making these brush strokes, you may again want to make them uh, go in the direction of the building that you're painting. All right, let's keep working. Let's get a little more painting medium and let's tackle this water. Let's really make this picture come to life. And then, um, of course, you know, we could paint uh, all day on Facebook Live. I know we only have an hour, so we're going to get through uh, as much as we can, and then we trust that you're going to pick up where we leave off. Um, and while we're working on uh, this modern Impressionist landscape, don't forget to check out our bundle page. The reference image is located on the bundle page, and you can have incredibly easy access to um, a starting point. A great starting point um, for you know using putting these acrylics to use and uh, taking your imagination along with you. I'm gonna let some of this. There we go. This is a really nice um, using that turquoise and blue. This is kind of a blue lagoon color. I'm gonna lighten this up. lighten up the blue and I'm being really liberal and I think that's fine and 
And some of this is going to indicate your shading. So think about um, you know, when you're putting these colors down, where you might want some of that blue and yellow and all that to go. And you might notice that I'm not really using water for these mixtures here um, with the painting medium. Really, we don't need it as much when we're using the medium. Um, the water will act as a thinner, and it may thin down your paints in a way that you don't necessarily want or need. So it's not a hard rule about not using water, but it's just a pro tip. And then really work that impressionist brush stroke into the water. And it really looks like the waves, uh, like you're in the canal. And that's what I love uh, about this texture and building this out. I can use a little bit of my yellow. And look how much fun I can have with color mixing with this project. Um, bringing those colors together easily because they are located near each other. Okay. It might take a little bit of practice in terms of loading up that paint on your palette knife. But you'll get the hang of it. All right. The other nice thing about this um, acrylic painting in general is that you can, just like with oil painting, although it doesn't act the same, you can go back in layer after layer and continue to build um, on that color. So that's something that I would definitely recommend. All right, let's get some of this, um, these other interesting parts and pieces worked in while we're still together. Um, so a couple of things. If you're just tuning in, uh, we're working on a modern impressionist landscape with the Utrecht acrylic colors and painting medium. Don't forget to check out the bundle page where you're going to find all of these materials, including the free reference image. So go ahead and print that out so that you can have a starting point. But then also don't forget to respond to our uh, question prompt for this evening, which is, who is your favorite impressionist painter? And have you ever painted with a palette knife before? We would love to know. Fill us in. And you could be winning a $100 Blick e-gift card. And you can go straight over to that bundle page and pick up all these supplies that we're using here. All right. Let's go ahead and work in some of this brick. Now you might tweak some of these color formulas. You might say, OK, that was great, but you know, what if I uh, mix my blues this way, or what if I mix my reds this way, or what if I add a little bit of yellow, um, just like we did there, and get some more of that orange, and then fill in that brush stroke. Perfect. I'm going to work on getting some of these broad stroke layers. Let me go back to my yellow. Let me get some of this big information filled in. And that's something that I love about these palette knives, is that I can really work in a lot of this information. And yes, I am covering up my drawing, but I'm going to show you another technique that you can do with these palette knives. And that is carving and scraping and scumbling. So here where I had my door. I'm going to carve it back in. 
And there's another great way. And I remember my drawing. So while I can't see it, you continue to draw with the paint. So you never stop drawing. Once you make that drawing, that's just one step. Um, you want to keep drawing as you paint, and that's how you get that detail. That's how you get it worked in. Let's get some of this. So around these windows, I'm going to kind of avoid the shutters, because I can go back. Something that I like to do when I'm using this process is if I have small areas, I might wait until some of the areas dry before I go in and fill those in with a palette knife. That just helps to regulate uh, some of the paint that's going down on your surface. Keep that, and you can carve and scrape away. So you still have a drying time that you're working with, but it doesn't have to be a challenge. Let's scrape away here. And I love this. What a great way to get texture in your artwork. Absolutely foolproof. Let's get some more. I'm feeling adventurous, and I want to get uh, some of this uh, red filled in while I still have this cadmium red medium. I'm going to move my paint down. I love this glass palette, and you can see why now, I think. Because I can scrape. It's incredibly sturdy. Again, no waste. I can just work one layer over top of the other. This is a really nice neutral. Let's go ahead. Um, I want to show you a different palette knife. Let's use this one that we were talking about earlier, this larger palette knife, the size 132. And let's get it loaded up. And let's lay that down. Always helps getting these larger areas filled in. And then you can proceed with everything else. Right? Okay, and then I'm going to go back in. And once you start getting those palette knives going, you might find that they start to act just like your favorite paint brushes. So the more you are using them and in the process of using them, taking them in and out of the water, cleaning them off on a paper towel, the more you're going to realize, hey, this is starting to feel just like a paintbrush. I like to work toward that. Let's get some of this area filled in. Don't forget to print out that reference image. I do think it helps to paint from reference. I think it can be challenging to always, you know, um, especially if you're just starting out, uh, you know, trying to think of what it is that you're going to paint. What am I going to paint? Um, you know, don't think too much about it. Just paint. Uh, use some of these resources that we're um, setting out for you and just paint. Um, now, one color that I really love is this kind of parchment. Well, that's kind of muddy. Let's start over. I like this parchment color. And um, that's going to be over here on the side of our building. Um, you know, with these uh, architectural features and windows, there's this lovely parchment color. Let's go ahead and fill that in um, as we're moving through this. A little bit more ochre. And I honestly think that that's just a lot of white plus yellow ochre. Get my white back here. That's not muddy. If it gets muddy, just scrape it away. Some of my painting medium. And I'm really eyeing the ratio at this point. We talked about, I keep sticking my finger in the, 
oopsie. Um, we keep talking about, you know, the best ratio for medium to paint. And really that's completely up to you based on, you know, the transparency that you want, like we talked about. But, you know, don't feel um, uh, pressured by having to use, you know, only this much or only that much. Just, you can intuit that. So let's go ahead and get some of this worked in. We're getting really close to getting this surface covered. And once that initial layer is down, uh, you'll have a really fun time going in and painting uh, using your brush again, you know, some of those details and just going right over the texture. We get our windows and painting in some of those details. And there are so many palette knives by RGM. Why stick to just one? Um, this is my favorite palette knife. And uh, it's the one that, it's my go-to. It's the one that I rely on. Um, it's my favorite. But you might have something different that you like. And um, there are, again, so many to choose from. And then carve. Go back over that drawing and carve that texture back in. Put my reference image up here again. And maybe as you're watching, you're thinking, oh, you know, she should, she should do that part next. She should, you know, paint this color. And I think that's just part of the excitement of painting that tells you that you should dive in immediately <laughs> and start enjoying some of this process for yourself. Or maybe you're wondering, oh, I wonder if I mixed this color with that color. Um, you know, and, and your mind is starting to wonder. Um, now is the time to try it. Let's get these flower boxes in. And I'm not 100% sure how we're doing on time. So I'm going to try and get this in. while we still have time together. Another thing you can do, I don't want to forget to tell you about this. Um, you know, there's so many ways that you can make marks with palette knives. Here, um, I'm kind of loading up the paint. I think that's a good way to look at it. I'm loading up the paint on the edge of my palette knife and I can just create any edge depending on the way that I loaded it up, boom. So if you're wondering about these, you know, how do I make um, sharp edges? How do I, you know, get these details in? There's always a way to use a palette knife. So, you know, thinking about um, palette knife painting as being uh, restricting because you don't have a brush, you know, would be a mistake because um, truly you can get almost any shape that you would with a brush just by different means. All right. Now I want to keep working um, and I hope that at home uh, you're painting along or you're checking out that bundle page and you're thinking about um, the colors that you're going to be using for your next painting. I hope that's what you're thinking about and I hope that that's uh, what we were able to bring to you this evening. Uh, before our uh, demo comes to a close, I want to give you one last chance to enter our giveaway by um, for a $100 Blick e-gift card. And that's by following us on Facebook, liking this post, um, liking our page, and letting us know the uh, response to our prompt, which is, who is your favorite impressionist painter? And have you ever painted with a palette knife before? We would love to know. And you'll be entered to win that e-gift card.
Now let's punch up some of this neutral in the bridge. I just laid down some color. Brick can be really tough. So I think that's why I disclaimered it earlier. I like to use a little bit of red, a little bit of burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw sienna, whatever you might have, and help those colors to work together. That's a little more neutral. Let's make it a little bit darker. Just a little tweak because some of my umber dried out. Uh, if you are worried about acrylic colors drying out on your palette, you can always spritz them with just a, a little bit of water. Not a lot because the water is a thinner, um, so you don't want to go, there we go, that's a little more brick, brick colored. There we go. How fun is that? Got a little bridge right in the middle, giving us a really nice focal point. Perfect. All right. Boop. Sorry, <laughs> gotta stop doing that. Um, that the boop is a good sound. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's that feeling uh, when you've put the, the paint to the paper and you feel good about it. Like, yep, I made that decision. Now, I'm going to finish this off uh, here this evening. Uh, obviously, we want to keep painting, but I just want to show you the sky before they totally cut me off um, for time. And we are okay on time, right? One minute, all right. One last minute and I won't waste a, a drop of it. Um, blue and white for our sky. Oh, I have eight minutes, all right. <laughs> the more time, the better. All right. That gives you time to answer the giveaway. That gives you time to check out our bundle page. Um, and it gives you time to explore these Utrecht colors, including uh, the cadmium free paints, which we've used here. And you can, um, you can neutralize those colors. You can uh, mix them together. You, know, you can make any uh, incredible mix of colors uh, that you might have in your imagination, and um, we hope that you do. Let's just get a little bit more. I really like the way that um, the sky and the water uh, start to really look similar. Keep that orange out, get this nice. The other thing that this painting medium is going to do is it's going to extend your paint. So you might end up using even less color than you had originally thought because you're cutting that color with the medium. Bring in that impressionist mark making right into it. See how easily you can achieve shading. That might be another thing that you're thinking about. You know, how do I get shading uh, when I'm using a palette knife? And it's simple. You just work that color in. You just, um, you just give it a shot. You go for it. And that's how you make it happen. Okay. All right, one of the colors that I do think uh, is important that we work in here, uh, and it's just gonna be uh, a little bit of this blue and yellow. I'm gonna salvage some of this that I have as a starting point uh, to work in some of this foliage. 
I want to make sure I get this in before we cut the camera because I do think um, it's such a nice um, addition to the color palette and um, I'm glad that we've made it this far together. Um, to mix this green, uh, this is a nice spring green, but I'm going to bring it uh, back down with the turquoise. Um, so I'm definitely leaning on turquoise with this painting. Um, I hope to point out how versatile this color is. Um, it's a newer color, uh, not brand new, but newer. So um, if you haven't already given it a try, I do want to recommend it. So I'm just using the turquoise and a little bit of this cadmium free yellow. And I'm gonna bring in a little more painting medium. Awesome, love it, okay. And we can just load that up and let's just dot that in. How fun is that? I love it. Um, that's the kind of thing, you know, um, that, that I really like is, you know, really just getting the idea of, uh, the image. It doesn't have to look exactly like, um, that reference image. You know, the whole idea of, um, painting, uh, with an impressionist brush stroke is to really get the sense of what that that item that that thing that you're looking at that object looks like it's really getting the sense of it um, not necessarily that it has to be uh, completely 100 percent representational you know i think that's what's so nice um, about impressionism and uh, why we're loving uh, bringing it into um, the acrylic painting realm we want to finish up some of these architectural details. And I know that uh, if you've been uh, watching this whole time, uh, you're probably hoping to uh, get started soon on your uh, impressionist landscape. Don't forget to carve. Um, and I think uh, you're really going to enjoy all of the textures and the bright colors. Um, that we've got here and uh, like I said I'm going to keep painting I really like where this is going I'm really excited and I hope that you are too um, I wanted to show you what we're working toward um, so if you can't see uh, with the naked eye uh, from far away this is what we're working toward. So layer after layer, as you continue to build the acrylic paints, notice how much, how fluffy this paint starts out and then uh, how much it's going to sink into that canvas. That's why it's great to have that extra layer of gesso. Can you see here? Perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, that's why it's great to have that extra layer of gesso and that's why it's great to go back in with your brush and do that, you know, uh, some of those brush strokes and some scumbling and bringing out, you know, some of these highlights and some of these edges, you know, um, for example, uh, you know, taking that paint and edging it out. Don't be afraid to use your paintbrush. Don't be afraid to use your palette knife. And this is really a, a lesson in uh, that level of bravery, and I know that you can do it. So we'll be announcing the winner in our chat momentarily, so stick around for that, and we'll see you for our next Facebook Live Thursday at 4 p.m. We'll see you there.